Hello everyone, I am Dr. Trupti. Welcome to my YouTube channel Enjoy Biochemistry. In this video, you are going to learn about transport of glucose across cell membrane and more specifically about glucose transporters. How does glucose enter inside the cell? It is a large molecule and it cannot enter inside the cell by simple diffusion. So it has to be transported by some mediators and it is transported inside the cell by two different mechanism and one of them is facilitative transport and it occurs with the transporters called as GLUT that is glucotransporters. This is the carrier mediated process which enables large molecules like glucose to flow through membrane channels and this leads to bidirectional glucose transport so as soon as glucose is transported with the help of these glute receptors inside the cell glucose has to be trapped in the form of glucose 6 phosphate the other transport mechanism is secondary active transport which occurs with the help of other transporters like sodium glucose link transporters this is a sodium glucose symport and it is responsible for unidirectional glucose transport and in this process energy is required and this process uses an electrochemical gradient across plasma membrane as energy source. So glucose transport inside the cell occurs by two mechanisms. The first one is facilitative transport or facilitative diffusion with the help of glucose transporters commonly called as glutes and second mechanism is secondary active transport with the help of sodium glucose trans link transporters. So now we know that there are two types of glucose transporters glutes and sodium glucose link transporters. So this glute is nothing but glucose transporters GLU from glucose T from transporter. So glute stands for glucose transporters and these glutes they are solute carrier family proteins. So they belong to solute carrier family 2 and that's why they are labeled as SLC2. And there are 14 different types of glutes are known and these glutes are sodium and ATP independent. They do not require sodium and ATP for their transport. Out of 14 glutes, only 5 are well characterized from GLUT1 to GLUT5 and GLUT1 gene is denoted by SLC2A1 because all the glutes belong to family that is soluble carrier family 2 and that's why it is denoted as SLC2, GLUT1 as A1, GLUT2 as A2, GLUT3 as A3, likewise GLUT4 as A4 and GLUT5 as A5. So out of 14, 5 are well characterized. This Sodium glucose link transporters. S stands for sodium, G for glucose, L for linked and T for transporter. And they belong to solute, solute carriers family 5, SLC5. So these transporters, they are sodium and ATP dependent. They require sodium and ATP. Means glucose is transported in the cell with the help of sodium and ATP and is sodium glucose symport. So there are mainly two types. SGLT1 and as the family is solute carrier family 5, the SGLT1 gene is uh, named as SLC5A1 and SGLT2 gene is named as SLC5A2. Let's first talk about sodium glucose link transporters and this transport of glucose with the help of these transporters is coupled with sodium potassium ATPase pump. There are two types of SGLTs, SGLT1 and SGLT2. SGLT1 is located in the enterocytes of small intestinal epithelium on the luminal site and this is responsible for glucose and galactose absorption in the intestinal cell. SGLT1 are also located in the renal tubular cell that is the S3 segment of renal tubular cells. Now where this SGLT2 are located? SGLT2 are located in the proximal tubule of nephron, specifically in the S1 and S2 segment and 90% of glucose reabsorption by kidney occurs in S2 
S2 segment where this SGLT2 are located. So if there is mutation in the gene in that is SLC5A2, it leads to renal glycosuria. This is the clinical correlation. If there is mutation in the gene coding for this transporters SGLT2 and that gene is called as SLC5A2 and the mutation in that gene leads to renal glycosuria. Glucose transporter family that is GLUT family has three classes because we know that there are 14 types of uh, GLUTs are present and they are classified in these three types class 1, class 2 and class 3. So GLUT 1, 2, 3, 4 they are present as class 1 GLUT family and uh, GLUT 14 is a gene duplication of uh, GLUT 3 so it is also included in this class 1. GLUT 5, 7, 9 and 11 they belong to class 2 of uh, GLUT family and GLUT 6, 8, 10, 12 and 13 they belong to class 3 of GLUT family. But out of these all the GLUTs only GLUT 1 to 5 they are well characterized. GLUT 1 transporters are mainly located in brain, erythrocytes, placenta and these GLUT1 transporters are ubiquitously distributed in various tissues. They are primary transporters which are responsible for glucose transport across the brain that is through blood brain barrier and these GLUT1 transporters are important specifically during fasting condition that is glucose uptake during fasting occurs with the help of this GLUT1 transporter in brain, in erythrocytes and placenta. GLUT2 transporters are located in the liver, beta cells of pancreas, kidney, intestine and they are called as glucose sensors as they are present in the beta cells of pancreas and responsible for insulin secretion when glucose level is high and it has high KM for glucose. This high KM of glucose in case of GLUT2 it ensures that liver and pancreas do not metabolize glucose until its level rise sufficiently high in the blood. So whenever only blood glucose level is high that glucose will be taken up by the liver and beta cells of pancreas at low level of glucose both liver and pancreas is not able to take up glucose because this GLUT2 transporters they have high KM and low affinity. And this GLUT2 molecules can transport both glucose and fructose and in the liver these GLUT2 transporters are responsible for glycogen formation because when blood glucose level is high in the circulation glucose enters in the liver with the help of these GLUT2 transporters and immediately it is trapped in the form of glucose 6-phosphate and further it is channeled to the formation of glycogen. In the pancreas the uptake of glucose by this GLUT2 transporter leads to insulin secretion through beta cells of pancreas in well-fed state. In the well-fed condition when the blood glucose level is high, GLUT2 transporters present in the liver they are responsible for uptake of glucose inside the hepatocytes and glucose is phosphorylated with the help of enzyme glucokinase to glucose 6-phosphate and further this glucose 6-phosphate is channeled for the storage form of glucose that is glycogen. So glycogenesis occurs. GLUT2 transporters are located in beta cells of pancreas. So this is a schematic representation showing beta cells of pancreas and how it leads to secretion of insulin from beta cells of pancreas. Let's see. So this GLUT2 transporters which have high KM and low affinity for glucose. So whenever there is high glucose level in well-fed state, glucose enters in the beta cell of pancreas with the help of this GLUT2 receptor. This glucose undergo glycolysis to form pyruvate. Then this pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA and in the mitochondria, acetyl-CoA is oxidized through TCA cycle, reducing equivalents are generated and they are transported through electron transport chain to form ATP. Now the ATP which is formed in the beta cells of pancreas, it will inhibit the ATP sensitive potassium channel. So there is inhibition of ATP sensitive potassium channel and it leads to depolarization. And because of this depolarization, 
there is influx of calcium through the calcium channels and this calcium then activate insulin containing granules in the beta cells of pancreas there will be exocytosis and insulin is released in the circulation in well fed state that's how glut 2 transporter helps in insulin secretion in well fed state now let's see how glut 2 and sglt1 they help in the intestinal transport of glucose so this is the schematic representation of intestinal cell and this is intestinal lumen this side is a luminal side this is intestinal cell and this is blood capillary so sodium glucose link transporter 1 is located on this luminal side of intestinal cell and glut 2 receptors are located on this capillary side so this through this sodium glucose link transporter glucose is transported across this enterocyte with the help of sodium glucose import that is the secondary active transport so both glucose and sodium they share this sodium glucose transporter 1 and they enter enterocyte now this sodium potassium atpase pump is located here on this side and sodium then leaves enterocyte it comes in circulation in exchange of potassium with the help of the sodium potassium atpase pump and the energy generated is responsible for transport of glucose through this glut 2 transporter in the capillary so this is how glut 2 transporters and sodium glucose linked transporter 1 is responsible for absorption of glucose in the intestinal cell and then release of this glucose in the circulation glut 5 receptors are also located on the enterocyte and intestinal luminal side so with the help of that glut 5 and glut 2 fructose is also get absorbed in the intestinal cell and then with the help of glut 2 is also responsible for transport of this fructose in the blood capillary so this is how the transporters help in intestinal absorption of glucose glut 3 transporters are mainly expressed in the neurons it is the major glucose transporter of neurons can also be present in the intestine they are insulin independent they have low km and high affinity and that's why important in glucose uptake during fasting glut 4 transporters they are located in the skeletal muscle cardiac muscle adipose tissue and they are insulin dependent they require insulin for uptake of glucose inside muscle and adipose tissue they have moderate km and moderate affinity for glucose and this is responsible for insulin dependent glucose uptake after meals so in the well fed state there is release of insulin by beta cells of pancreas and that insulin is responsible for means recruitment of this glut 4 receptors on skeletal muscle cardiac muscle and adipose tissue and that's why in the well fed state glucose is taken up by all these muscle and adipose tissue with the help of this glut 4 transporters in the well fed state whenever there is increased glucose concentration there is release of insulin from beta cells of pancreas insulin interacts with the insulin receptors present in the muscle and it leads to activation of insulin receptors and further it recruits glut 4 transporters which are present intracellularly to the surface of cell so there is recruitment of glut 4 receptor on the surface so that glucose is taken up by the muscle likewise insulin also interacts with the insulin receptors present on the adipose tissue activation leads to recruitment of glut 4 to the surface glucose is taken up by the adipose tissue and that's why glut 4 transporters are insulin dependent glut 5 is the only transporter that exclusively transport fructose and it is present in the intestine and in the testes specifically sperms because sperm require fructose so this glut transporters they are present on the glut 5 transporters they are present on the luminal side of intestinal cell and with the help of that fructose is transported inside the intestinal cell and later with the help of uh, glut 2 it comes in the circulation so glut 5 is the only transporter that exclusively transports fructose glut 6 are located in the white blood cells and spleen and the action is not known 
Glut7 is present in the liver endoplasmic reticulum and it is responsible for transport of glucose in the endoplasmic reticulum. Now let's revise important glutes. Glut1 located in the red blood cells, blood brain barrier, placenta. These are insulin independent and responsible for glucose uptake during fasting. Please note, GLUT1 are present in the erythrocyte and responsible for glucose uptake by the erythrocytes. GLUT2 are located on the liver, beta cells of pancreas, small intestine. They are insulin independent, having high KM and low affinity. So whenever blood glucose rises in the liver and beta cells of pancreas, glucose is taken up. And in the liver, it leads to formation of glycogen. And in the beta cells of pancreas, glucose uptake by GLUT2 is responsible for insulin secretion. GLUT3 in brain neurons, these are insulin independent, having low KM, high affinity. So responsible for glucose uptake during fasting. GLUT4 are located in skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, cardiac muscle. And they are insulin dependent, so they require insulin for recruitment from the intracellular site to the surface so that glucose can be taken up by the skeletal muscle, adipose tissue and cardiac muscle. GLUT5 transporters, they are present in the luminal site of intestinal epithelial cells and sperm and they are insulin independent and they are, they exclusively transport fructose. GLUT9 are located in the liver and kidney responsible for urate transport. So GLUT9 are the urate transporters. And apart from GLUT4, the other GLUTs which are insulin responsive or insulin dependent are GLUT8 and 10. So GLUT4, 8 and 10, they are insulin responsive.